and welcome to another edition of The Simsbury Woman. My name is Shannon Nall. And today I am joined by a wonderful Simsbury woman named Terry Wolfish Cole. Hi, Terry. Welcome. Hi, Shannon. Good to be here. Thank you so much for coming. I'm excited to get into your I story am too. today. So, <clears throat> Terry is the producer and host of Tell Me Another, which is um, a true live storytelling show that Correct. you produce in the Greater Hartford area. That is Correct? true. Correct. Okay. That is all true. Perfect. <clears throat> Before we talk about that, sure. just as by way of introduction and how you came to be in storytelling, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. tell us about your Simsbury life. My Simsbury <clears throat> life. We moved here from Manhattan uh, two weeks before 9-11. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Yeah. I was pregnant, seven months. I had a f almost four-year-old. We had a two-bedroom apartment in New York and a lovely life, mm -hmm. but nowhere to put the new baby. Right. We knew someone who had lived in Simsbury. It was a great town. We put everything on a truck, and here we are. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So you've just kind of been the, the typical mom in Simsbury, involved yeah. in your kids' activities, schools, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. I have always worked. Mm -hmm. um, I... Worked from home for many years. I have managed local yoga studios, taught yoga, worked doing uh, work with teens mm -hmm. at uh, in religious school and doing yoga, all kinds of stuff. Volunteering at the library. Um, now I work as a freelance marketing consultant. Okay. That's my kind of primary gig, right. as they say on the internet. Right. And my side hustle is tell me another. Okay. So let's. Tell me about Tell Me Another. How okay. did you How did you find it? How did you mm -hmm. head that direction? So in December of 2015, I guess it was, I came to work one morning to teach yoga. Mm -hmm. And a yoga student walked in and she said to me, Terry, I did this thing and you should do it. She said, I went to a show over the weekend on a date and people get up on stage and they tell true stories from their own lives, she said. And you always start class by telling us a story from your life. I think you should take this to stage. So I did a little Googling. I found the show she had been to. I found out that they taught workshops because oh. storytelling is a learned skill. I'm sure. Yeah. I signed up for a beginner and an advanced workshop. And at that advanced workshop, we had a chance to tell a story. And it was very clear to me when I did it that I had tapped into something really meaningful and um, a, a talent that I had. Although I had learned the skills, the talent was there. I have a background as a writer mm -hmm. that was all there. So I got up, I told this story, and when it was over, I pitched the show. The local storytelling shows are all curated, and okay. the way you get to be cast is you send an email and say, here's the story I'd like to tell. And they sent me back a note that said, thanks, but probably not that story, which was sad, but yeah. in hindsight was the right choice. Okay. And then at the beginning of June, I, um, my then employer and I, we went our separate ways, and we were going to New York, my husband and my kids and I, um, incredibly, we had tickets to see a matinee of Hamilton with the oh original cast. Yeah, it was a big oh deal. Oh my goodness, that is and a big deal. And the night before the matinee in New York was The Moth. Okay. The Moth is the nation's premier storytelling event. Okay. When you go to New York and you tell a story, and you go to The Moth, you buy tickets, and if you want to tell a story, you drop your name in the hat, and if they pull you out, you tell your story. <laughs> And what I didn't know at that time was that New York is the hardest place to get your name pulled because there are so many people there. Uh, it, right. And it's really hard to win. People do this as their hobby or there might be professionals trying out a segment for a one-man show. Okay. There's a lot going on. And I had no idea. I thought everybody was just like me, showed right. up with a story to tell. So we go to the moth and my name gets pulled. Oh, my gosh. I go number five, ah. coming into the turn, I'm leading, and lo and behold, I win that night at the Moth. It was my first time on stage. It was incredible. 
when you win that first level competition at the Moth, you get a certificate and an invitation to come back to a curated championship. That Holy was cow. in August in New York, where we're from. Mm-hmm. So all my friends were there. Mm-hmm. My sister came up from Washington. My daughter was there. My husband. It was great. Yes. You don't draw to tell a story because you know you're going. You draw for pole position. And I pulled number five, my lucky spot. And I am telling you the truth when I say to you, I went into that night like a 16-year-old who gets nominated for an Oscar for her first role, like it's an honor just to be here. Right. It really was. Until the grades came in. Oh, no. The judging came in, and I was in the lead going into the turn. And I went to the bathroom backstage, and a girl looked at me and said, you just won. And I was like, nah. And she goes, you'll see. And after that, we were watching the scores and doing the math, and I won. And it was one of the greatest nights of my life. That is remarkable. It was incredible. Okay, so now I have to ask. Okay. What was the story that you told? The story I told was the story of running away from home when I was five. Hmm. Um, it's, it, was, it was a story that I had heard and told my whole life that I crafted into a stage performance. The, the theme for the evening was fuel to the fire, and we made it work. You can see the story. It's featured on the homepage at my website, mm-hmm. tellmeanotherstories.com. So you just had this in you. Mm-hmm. And did. you just kind of without inhibitions or intimidation, yes. you just well, pulled it off the cuff. Inhibi- no. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. No, no. When you do a show, whether it's Tell Me Another or it's one of the local curated shows, um, There is Speak Up, that's Matt and Alicia Dix's show. There is The Mouth Off with Kyone Wolf Mm -hmm. at the Mark Twain House. There is now the three groups are together doing the Great Hartford Story Slam, which is not curated. That is a um, a competitive event. Everybody comes practiced. Okay. You work with a timer at home. Of course, that makes sense. You might work with a coach. I have a one-on-one coaching call later tonight to help someone get ready for a show. Wow. Yeah. So what are the criteria then to to be a storyteller? Mm-hmm. What what do you have to have in your wheelhouse maybe? Everybody's a storyteller. <laughs> Everybody has a story that matters. So yes, the I first believe. thing, the first thing you need is a core belief that your story matters. Mm-hmm. And I believe that about everybody. Um, when I teach a workshop, I, I tell people often, if you have a story in which you rush into a burning building to save a litter of disabled puppies, mm-hmm. like that's great, tell that story. Mm-hmm. But most people probably don't have that. Right. Um, the stories that I've told on stage are about the time I ran away from home when I was five. I've told about um, meeting someone very famous and how he helped me help my child. I've told about Jonah learning to swim when he didn't want to. Hmm. Um, And then as time went on and I became even less inhibited than perhaps I already am, um, people have heard me on stage talk about losing my virginity, talk about my first, last, and only Brazilian bikini wax. (laughs) So so there's nothing is sacred. um, What is sacred to me is other people's stories. Um, So my family members, they know that I will tell stories about them, but I will ask first. Okay. That's that's reasonable, fair, respectful. I mean, even even though when I'm telling a story about them, I'm telling a story about me. Right. If they are a player in the story, I think it is only fair. I recently told a story in which my 17-year-old son, Jonah, did something particularly foolish on a dare from his father. But before I told that story, I asked him. Okay. You know, and before I would put that story up on my website, I would ask him. Right. That's right. only that's only fair. Right. Not not everything in your life is so that I have a story to tell. Correct. Correct. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> oh good. So we won't tell stories about yeah. you yet. No, Shannon. not yet. Um but but I do just want to say those much more personal stories that comes later. That is not what I would recommend to somebody as mm-hmm. their first time up on stage. Mm-hmm. You got to be comfortable up mm-hmm. there. 
Mm-hmm. And most new storytellers, I think, are not going to be very comfortable with something quite, it's a little too vulnerable right. when you're both worried about your skills as a storyteller and you're worried about the content that mm-hmm. you're delivering. So let's talk about content for a second, a little bit more. Do sure. you have to be funny? Do you have to be emotional? Do you have to be authentic as mm. the most That's important? That's a great question. Authentic, yes. Mm-hmm. Emotional, sort of. Mm-hmm. Um, funny, not always. So it's like this, right? Here's the difference in a nutshell between an anecdote and a story. We okay. learn this from the moth. Okay. A story has stakes. There is something that you want, need, are afraid of, desire, hope for. Mm -hmm. And somewhere in that story, there's going to be a moment of transformation. Okay. And that transformation might not be a positive one. You might be worse off at the end of the story than you were at the beginning. But something in you changes. Okay. And what happens there is that that story then becomes both unique and universal. So it's unique. You're the only one who's ever been you. You're the only one who's ever done this thing, was there at that moment, saw it through. Your sister, if you have one, could tell the same story and it will be different. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. But there's something universal in there. Mm -hmm. We can all relate to that feeling of hope, devastation, terror, love, right? whatever it's going to be. Okay. That makes that's, sense. That's a story. Okay. Now, does it have to be funny? Yes, no, maybe. Um, the best stories to me are never just one thing. The story that I told, the first story at the Moth in New York was about my tattoo. Um, on, my, on my body, I have tattooed the words, enjoy every sandwich. <laughs> okay. Know, um, it's sort of a rock and roll version of Carpe Diem. Okay. Okay. It's also, it's a story about my father's death Hmm. and losing my father. And that was a terrible tragedy. In the midst of my last visit with him, he was going to have something to eat. And he looked up at us and said, I could really go for a tongue sandwich. Yeah, it's funny, right? The only time that story ever wasn't funny was when I told it at a synagogue with sort of an aging population and I got to that line I could really go for a tongue sandwich where everybody laughs except they all just looked at me like why is that funny (laughs) right right they're like yeah okay fine a tongue sandwich but so so there's the laughter in the midst of the horror of of my father's death Mm -hmm. when I told the story at the synagogue I looked at this woman and she was just weeping Mm -hmm. through the story. And afterwards, she came up to me and she said, I have to tell you something. She said, my husband died last year and he had esophageal cancer and he couldn't eat. And in the hospital, the last thing I gave him to eat was a tongue sandwich. Wow. And I pulled off little pieces and put them in his mouth. So there's my story, Mm -hmm. unique and universal. That's Uh, the best. That's really it. That's when it wins. And... And as far as funny and sad goes, like, wouldn't it be nice if you could wake up in the morning and Alexa, when she wakes you up, would say, good morning, Shannon. Today is going to be a sad day. Get ready. Right. Or, Shannon, today's going to be a happy day. You know, have a good time. Right. But life is never just one thing. It's always both, and sometimes it's both right at once, right together. Yeah. Yep. That's the best. To me, that's my favorite kind of story. And and exactly to your point, that is universal. That is the connection sure. that we all share. Sure. Um, and and just to sort of segue on that, the, the connection is something that interests me. Absolutely. And the, and the connection among women Absolutely. In, partic- in particular interests me. So why, why and how does that happen? And what is the importance of storytelling as a woman mm-hmm. or connecting mm-hmm. with other women through storytelling? That's a big, that was several questions. Yeah, there's many questions. But I think that women are taught from an early age to compete with each other. Boys are too, but in a whole different way. Boys compete on the field. Right. And girls do too, but girls are taught that everyone is both a potential friend and a potential enemy. Your friends are potential enemies, you know? Mm -hmm. And 
connection and trust is really important. And trust only comes when we're willing to share of ourselves, when we're willing to be vulnerable, when we're willing... Um, when we're willing to explore that universality, mm -hmm. it's hard in life <clears throat> to feel um, it is a revelation as an adult, I think, to discover that everyone feels different. It is a revelation to discover and a liberation to discover that we all think we're freaks. <laughs> This is very true. Right? Mm -hmm. It was liberating I to agree. find that out. But the stories to me, when somebody tells a story and I go like, well, I didn't have that exact experience, right? But the feeling that she's talking about, the feeling of being alone or of being afraid or of being left out, left behind, whatever that is, I understand mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the connection. Now... In terms of women, so when I get pitches for shows, right, some things push pitches up to the top of the pile. And one of the things that pushes pitches up is that I am committed to using this platform that I have developed, however small and mighty it is, to amplify voices that otherwise go unheard. Um, when I get a pitch from someone that is about, or not even about, I, I had a young man come and tell a story that was about being homeless. He he is, um, he was, I believe, Hispanic, and he had a story about being homeless, or nearly so, when he was 19. That moves to the top of the pile. Mm -hmm. A story a woman told about coming out to her Baptist grandma who said, I love you, but I don't approve. And since that conversation, they've only texted Wow. Yeah, that story moves to the top of the pile. Mm -hmm. um, I have a story coming up at my show on December 7th at Hartford Flavor Company. A young woman who, um, she was very ill when she was very young, and it required severe surgery that left her permanently changed. Mm -hmm. She's going to tell a story. These are voices I want to hear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm kind of uh, processing yeah. just the few stories, you know, just the it's a lot. tidbits that it's you... It's a lot. Because, uh, you know, that saying about everybody, everybody is going through something. Mm -hmm. And to your point, everybody has a story to tell. Everybody has a story to tell. So I, I'm, I'm finding that the fact that there is a forum for that could be hugely empowering. Hugely empowering. Now, what we don't do mm -hmm. is tell the story of the wound that is still actively right. bleeding. Right. That's not comfortable for anybody. Right. But when you've gone through the fire and you're on the other side, it's hugely empowering for somebody to hear. Uh, um, I had a woman tell a story not long ago, and it was a, her story was about how she came to have her dog. Hmm. But in the beginning of the story, she is... Um, she was telling about how she had kind of PTSD and she was very coy about it all. Okay. And we, when you're in the show, before the show, we do coaching calls. Over the phone, you call me and I'm taking notes and I'm giving you feedback because I want you to be as comfortable as you can be and feel as successful as possible up right. there. She was talking about this and I said to her, look, I can't make you do, I'm not even interested in making you do anything. But I am telling you, it comes across as you being a little coy and a little cagey. Okay. And she ended up getting up on stage and saying, I had PTSD because I was abused by a family member when I was younger. And when I told my parents about it, or either, I don't remember if she said, I told my parents and they didn't believe me, or I've never told my parents. Okay. This was the first time she had said that out loud. Wow. How amazing for her to feel. And she only had like that one sentence. She didn't elaborate. The wound was not no. exposed for the entire no. time. No. Okay. But how how amazing for her to have gotten up on stage and say I was abused when I was young mm -hmm. for the first time. Mm -hmm. I am so honored every time somebody's willing to share a secret with me. 
Well, I think that's, you know, that's another interesting perspective, too, is that whatever story people have to share, mm-hmm. it, is, it is theirs, mm-hmm. and it is um, important and valuable, and to that end, it is an honor mm-hmm. for the, um, mm-hmm. people to receive it. A hundred percent. And one of the things that's really great about coming to a show like mm-hmm. mine, right, or performing in a show like mine, the audience in many performances, um, especially I would say stand-up comedy, right? There's kind of an adversarial relationship going on between right. the audience and the performer. Right. This is an entirely collaborative experience. They are supportive. They ha- have paid money. They want you to succeed. They want you to be great. They want you to trust them. Mm-hmm. And the more that you do as the performer the better time everybody's having. I can see that. I can see why. It's a a very um, loving environment. I love watching people come up to the performers at intermission or at the end of the show and say to them, like, that was so great or something similar happened to me or good good for you. People often come and they bring their posse and, you know, there's a lot of cheering for the home team. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love I love that. And and how have women responded to this opportunity? Have they um do you find that women are drawn to storytelling? I do. Okay. I find that actually my cast is typically a little estrogen heavy. <laughs> um we okay. get a lot of women up there. I have had women tell stories about adopting children about um Oh my gosh, I'm trying to think what else. Sexual harassment. You know, a lot of stuff that many of us have gone through mm-hmm. and not really talked about it. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I think when you're talking about it in this performance, it's very liberating. It's not quite sure. as raw as, you know, talking about it in therapy or whatever. Right, right. I, I would imagine that, it, especially yeah. when you are referring to the... The relationship with the audience. Sure. As well. Sure. I mean, you are turning your life into art. I have recently mm-hmm. been doing a lot of storytelling around uh, my husband and I celebrated our 25th anniversary last year. Well, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you very that much. That is a milestone. It is a milestone. Um, it's hard work. It is as, very hard as, work. As I joked about it on stage, you can literally kill someone and serve <laughs> fewer years than 25. <laughs> it's hard work. It is. It and it is worth exploring what makes it work for us. What what have we done to make it work for ourselves and for each other? That's useful information for other people, Absolutely. but it's also useful contemplation for me. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And an, also an opportunity, I would think, in that particular circumstance to say, hey, like, We've done something really good. We've done something good, and I dig you. Yeah, you know? exactly. You're all, you're all right. I know last night we were fighting about the laundry, but overall, <laughs> you're all right. I dig you. Right, exactly. So do you have a favorite story that you've heard or that you've told? Oh, okay. I'll give you one for each. Okay. All right. My favorite story that I've told is um, is probably the one that won at the Moth, the story of running away from home. Okay. That story launched so much for me. It was on the Moth Radio Hour. It was featured in Reader's Digest. It's the story I know best and I typically tell at a workshop or when I do a training or a keynote speech. Um, my One of my favorite stories to hear, I don't know that I have a favorite, but okay. one of my favorites is on the Moth website at themoth.org. Mm-hmm. It's a story by a man named Matt McGoff. And he talks about his first day as a Bat Boy for the New York Yankees. Oh, my goodness. So if you if you Google Moth wow. and Bat Boy, mm, okay. you will find Matt McGough's story. It's longer than most and fantastic, especially if you are uh, raising baseball fans as we are. Okay, yes. Yeah, it's really good. As am I. So. Yeah, oh, totally play this for your guys. It's okay. so good. <laughs> it's so good. Okay, I definitely will. All right, and so you have a couple of events, or you have an event coming up in December. I have um, a few events coming okay. up. November 19th okay. is my next Introduction to Personal Storytelling workshop. That's at CT Improv okay. in downtown Hartford. 
There is another training coming up in December. That's all on my website okay. at www.tellmeanotherstories.com. Okay. Um, the next show is going to be December 7th at okay. Hartford Flavor Company. Okay. Um, that's super fun. They are a distillery and they make fantastic cocktails. Oh, um, fun. Yeah. If you come, just know they don't serve food, but you are welcome to bring your own. Fabulous. Yep. Our theme that night is gifted. Okay. Um, and it's going to be fantastic. Okay. And then we're into 2020 with um, storytelling workshops, trainings for not-for-profit boards and individuals. Oh, wonderful idea. Yeah. It's a great fundraising. Uh, we've done it. I've done storytelling shows as a fundraising event for the Humane Society oh. and others. Wow. Uh -huh. and, uh, Good. And the Great Hartford Story Slam and... On we go. Wonderful. Well, we're going to wrap up in a couple okay. of minutes, but I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you for, for being here. Me. I'm. Uh, I was looking forward to having this conversation because um, when you hear storytelling, mm -hmm. you, you know you he, you might instinctively think. Um, uh, I don't know, like Humpty Dumpty or something like yeah. that. You don't yeah. think of. Um, the story of, of someone's experience yeah, um, and, and something that brings a connection, a yes. community connection. So or there a are kind connection. of two veins of personal, of, of live storytellers. There's the fable and fairy tale vein, and there's the personal storytelling vein. Mm -hmm. And there is some crossover, but yeah, two distinct art forms, room for everybody. Yes, absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm glad that you um, were able to share with us today and just quickly... Goals for the new year. What do you, uh, do you want to change it up? Goals for the new year. Keep everything moving forward. Expand into presentations for corporate trainings and not-for-profit boards especially. Okay. And enjoy. And development professionals and fundraisers and that okay. jazz. And enjoy every sandwich. And enjoy every sandwich, always. <laughs> that and is a, something I'm going to keep with me. That's a great. There's a story about it. The story's on my website, so okay. you can see that there too. Okay. That's a something that will stick with me for sure. So yeah. thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Welcome back. We're so glad you're back thank in you. town. Good to be here. Definitely good to be back. All right. Um, thank you all for watching another edition of The Simsbury Woman. And I will look forward to seeing you again next month. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.